Hello, welcome back to the Bald Book Geek. I am the host of this, and this is the Marilyn Monroe reading list. Marilyn Monroe was a icon of cinema and still is an icon of cinema and starred in such amazing films as The Seven Year Itch, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Some Like It Hot, How to Marry a Millionaire, the show Girl and the Prince, to name but a few. There are some phenomenal films within her repertoire and she is definitely worth checking out. Her untimely death in the early 60s, which I'm not going to go into, but there's definitely some suspicion there. But she was an avid reader. She loved literature. She had a collection of over 500 books within her house, and that's what they know of. She collected these books and had many great first editions and was well read. This video is a nod to that. Never underestimate a blonde. She wasn't the dumb blonde people think she was. And what I want to say is that these books were very hard to pick. I went through her entire library and I picked four from it. And then I picked one from my personal library. So I've picked a book about Marilyn Monroe that I think you will enjoy. So, as always, please like, subscribe for more. Please hit the little bell icon and let's get this video started. So, the first book on the list is Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird is one of my favourite novels and a true classic. It's beautifully written, it's floral, the language is stunning, and Harper Lee's writing style is eloquent and stunning. The audiobook of this is just as good. A courtroom drama, a coming-of-age story, the good guy doesn't always win. Narrative that this paints is all put through the eyes of a child, the coming-of-age of a young woman. If Scout was alive, she would be dead now. If she was a real person, she would have died long, probably now or a long time ago. Or be very, very elderly. It paints a picture of a dying world, a forgotten world. The deep south of America of the 1930s. And a book that we are still learning lessons from today. People like to frame this book or consider it old and boring or racist or many other things really don't have a clue about it. This book is fundamentally one of the most beautiful and, in my opinion, one of the most important books ever written. It's stunning and one that I think you will love. The next book from the Marilyn list is Jack Kerouac, On the Road. Now, this is a classic in itself. He was a beatnet writer and part of the beatnet generation. Jack Kerouac has this voice which is very unique amongst rice especially rice of his generation it's it's almost stream of consciousness in places there's two versions of this a chaptered edited version and his original manuscript which was basically one long stream of consciousness it's semi-autobiographical again and it's about a road trip that he took with a friend this book is literally a man's journey in across space the people he meets along the way on this road trip the the characters, the story, the country that he is going across. Again, a forgotten world. Beautifully written, great poise, and Kerouac's work remains fundamentally amazing and definitely something you need to try. This is a very easy novel of his to read, I will say that. It's probably one of the most accessible, but Jack Kerouac, there was a darkness to him, even if it was just subtext. It, it's beautiful, and... Sadly, Jack Kerouac passed away and a few decades ago now, but sadly, and I always kind of felt like he was a failure. I will say that there is great audio archives of him reading his work, which are definitely worth tracking down. Arthur Miller, All My Sons. Now, Arthur Miller was married to Marilyn Monroe. And he did a great piece that remained unpublished until a few years ago about her death and why he wasn't at the funeral. It's heartbreaking, it's poignant, and really does say more than people give him credit for. Arthur Miller's All My Sons is the story of a family. It's a family drama set in the South. People coming home, murder, accused, and truth. How truth always comes out and how truth is always there, and how stuff secrets can rip apart family or make families in the um 
can break a family. All My Sons is a stunning piece of work, and I I would recommend, actually, I'd recommend all of Arthur Miller's work, just because he's a phenomenal playwright, and he's one of those writers that just can paint this picture. I mean, he did a lot of very personal stuff, and it's an easy one to read as well. Plays are very easy to read and very easy to get into. You have... You just have this family that have been ripped apart by secrets and things left unsaid. And I was very lucky to see a live stream of this from the Royal Theatre. It was absolutely stunning. Another one from Marilyn Monroe's personal library, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. <sighs> Rich white people in the suburbs of... New York and upstate New York and their lives and the interwining of self-made men, self-made women, unrequited love, eventual death and drama, a forgotten generation of the jazz age just before the economic depression that happened in the 20s and into the 30s. The, this is a jazz age novel and paints a beautiful picture of it. The characters are interwining and complicated. Although a short novel, it packs a punch, and it deals with almost socioeconomic class as well. Beautifully written, and this book gets unfairly dismissed by many younger readers as, oh, it's just about rich white people. No, it's a fantasy set against the backdrop of the jazz age. You're very... <laughs> it's, it's one of those books that not only packs an emotional punch, it packs a warning as well. What makes us happy? What doesn't make us happy? Are our lives we're leading perfect or not? Beautifully written, great poise, and F. Scott Fitzgerald died thinking he was a failure. The character of Daisy is based on his then-wife Zelda, another Jazz Age icon, and Daisy is often renamed Zelda in some productions. And this is from my own personal library. This book is not one that she owned. This is a book about her. In the 1960s, not long before her death, she took part in her final photo shoot. This book was published in the 80s and... late 80s, and is a source of that photo shoot. Although it deals with her life, her biography, it is based on the interviews that she gave him. It's based on the photography. It's based on the time they spent together. It's heartbreaking in parts, and it really delves into her life. Great quotes, but amazing photography... A woman in her mid-thirties who seemed to be getting everything into together. Her career was starting to come back again and she was into, ready to do some projects that never happened. Unfortunately, this was her last interview and her last photo shoot and it really delves within her life. I feel like with Marilyn, she was an icon of cinema but also very misunderstood and remains one of my favourite actresses. She is often misquoted, she is often twisted into the beautiful dumb blonde. She really wasn't. This book packs a punch, and if you can track this down secondhand, do it. It's called Marilyn Norma Jean, and as you can see by the picture, it's one to check out. Um, there is hardbacks versions of this as well, but paperback seems to be the cheapest option. Beautiful, stunningly written, and really does paint a picture of who this, who she was as a woman. And the photography, on that level, as a photographer, it's also beautiful. 